I think there are two things, really. The first is, um, especially in technology projects, uh, it seems to me the most common reason they fail is that they were never actually possible to begin with. But, you know, the project gets handed over from the customer or the stakeholders and everybody just says sure to it and off they go without without thinking or analysing the thing, which is something that would never happen in any other kind of industry. So I think that's the number one reason thing, things fail. And then after that, I think, you know, the success of the project, if we get past that obstacle, the success of the project is in the planning. It's not in the execution, which if you think about it, when projects get into trouble, what do bosses typically do? They tell everybody to work harder, you know, to execute more plan. But really executing a bad plan, you know, it's very much a case of when you're in a hole, stop digging. Like really, if the project gets into trouble, the problem probably lies in the plan rather than the, in the execution of the plan, you know? So really those two things, if, if people were to only take two ideas away from this video or if they were to stop playing it now, it would be those two things. Not to say sure without some giving it some thought first and then the whole thing of building good plans. I guess there's five things, so I'll do them on my fingers. Uh, the first one is, what exactly are we trying to do and how would we know when that was done? Um, so that's, that's what's typically called a goal. And the issues here are that the goal has to be bounded. It can't be kind of fluffy. Um, we've got to involve all the project stakeholders in fixing the goal. And the goal will change over the life of the project, and that has to be controlled as opposed to happening in an uncontrolled kind of way, which is often referred to as scope creep. So that's the first thing. The second thing then is we have to try and estimate the work to be done. And there are ways of doing that. I mean, it can't be done with 100% accuracy, but there are ways of doing it that can give you reasonable accuracy. And also to bear in mind that we need to figure out two things when we're building a plan. One is how long is it going to take, but also how much work is involved, because until we know that, we don't know how many people we need to do that work. That's the second thing. Uh, the project has to have a leader. It, it needs somebody who day to day sort of tends it, moves it forward. Uh, and there's real work involved in doing that. It's not just some kind of title or honorary thing. Um, once we've figured out the work that has to be done, we need people to do the work. And the key issue here is about multitasking, you know, people working on more than one thing at a time. And this is rampant in technology companies. I mean, it's rampant in every company, but particularly technology companies. And it's disastrous for productivity where people are hopping from one thing to the next. And really, technology companies would get a huge uh, leap, leap forward in productivity if they, could, if they could stop doing that. And there are ways to stop doing it. Um, then the fifth thing is that there needs to be a safety margin in the plan. And typically, there are two ways of doing that. One is to put contingency in the plan, to have something in reserve for when things go wrong, and then to try and stop things from going wrong, which is often referred to as risk management. And those are the five things that need to be in the plan.